They imagined that before DNA, there existed an RNA world, and it was from this that the DNA world evolved. This RNA world was an alien, mysterious place that we don't really understand. It was a parallel world of biology. My colleague at Sussex University, Dr. Adam Ayer Walker, explains. So the RNA world is a sort of hypothetical stage in the origin of life. These RNA molecules are very, very small, and so you really can't see them. Now, the very thing needed to make this primitive RNA world work was the one thing that seemed impossible. In order for RNA to survive long enough to give us the DNA world, it would have needed to make copies of itself, otherwise it would have died out. RNA would have needed to replicate. So replication uh, is really when you make a copy of something. So in biology, you get a lot of systems which self-replicate. They make copies of themselves. Life is a system which can self-replicate. So we're self-replicators, birds are, bacteria are. So all organisms are self-replicators. Replication is a characteristic of all living things. The trouble was that no one could see how RNA could replicate itself. Then, a special type of RNA molecule was discovered which seemed to solve this problem. In 1989, two scientists, Sidney Altman and Thomas Cech, discovered RNA molecules that could not only carry genetic information, but could also perform some of the simple chemistry that life in the RNA world would have needed. So Altman and Cech uh, discovered that these RNA molecules could uh, snip out uh, parts of other RNA molecules. This might not sound like much, but RNA molecules like these are amazing. Here were RNA molecules that did more than relay genetic information. They actually did chemistry. And if they could do chemistry, then they could be the key to making more RNA. Well, the aspect of the RNA world that really appeals to me is it, it does, it's very, very simple. It really does solve this central conundrum with, with the origin of life, and you really can see how life could evolve from that sort of system. Altman and Czech won the Nobel Prize. The discovery breathed life into the idea of the RNA world. Up until then, it had been a good idea, but now, it was a great one. The discovery of these special RNA molecules, and many hundreds more like them, was a key step in the search for the origin of life. Now at last, science could begin to close the gap between the primordial soup of the ancient Earth and the origin of life as we know it. It seems we owe a lot to DNA's lesser known relative. Through the distant mists of geological time, it looks as if the RNA world really could have been a crucial milestone on the long, long road to us. Which is about three and a half thousand million years into the future. That away. But if its origins we're interested in, then the next question is, how did the RNA world originate? Scientists have found it difficult recreating all the chemicals that would have been needed to build the RNA world. The ingredient of RNA that's given scientists the most problems is a chemical called ribose. This forms part of RNA's backbone, so it's clearly important. Now, ribose is a very difficult molecule to make using the ingredients that were in the primordial soup. But there are many ways of producing it that still have to be explored. In fact, in making this film, I've been inspired to try some experiments of my own. They'll be based on the molecules that we discovered several years ago in space. The dust between the stars is full of interesting ingredients, as we discovered when some colleagues and I pointed a radio telescope at the sky. In just one dust cloud, we detected billions of tons of lots of different carbon molecules. Perhaps one of these could be the key ingredient needed to create RNA from scratch. But there are lots of other interesting ingredients out there too. 
And I've been thinking of taking some of the compounds that we detected out in space and putting them into Miller's apparatus and see whether we can find some of the missing building blocks. If we can make a richer primordial soup, then perhaps we'll discover how ribose was made more than three and a half thousand million years ago. It'll take a few months, but if we're successful, you'll be hearing about it. Once the stardust from which all living things are made reached the Earth, where were they mixed together to make life? Perhaps it was somewhere under the primordial oceans. Somewhere like this. As inhospitable as these hydrothermal vents might look, they are teeming with microscopic life forms. The bacteria that thrive in this strange environment are not unlike those that dominated the Earth's history for 3,000 million years. We're only just beginning to really understand places like this, and we're still only just beginning to understand the RNA world. So how are we doing in our search for the origin of life? Well, solving a three and a half thousand million year old mystery was never going to be easy. I really like the idea that the ancestor of all living things lived in an RNA world, and that it was out of this world that life as we know it evolved. What I like most is that it's really beautiful science, and some great scientists are working on it. In fact, I think some major advances are just around the corner. You know, I really wish I was a kid again, because I think some of the last major pieces in the puzzle are just going to be put in. In fact, what I like most about it is, it's just chemistry. <laughs>